Good afternoon. As Dr. Bowling said, my name is Anna, Anna Dixon, and I'm a Cottrell Scholar here representing the wonderful School of Business that has, thank you, representing the wonderful School of Business that organizes these speaker series. So today I would like to introduce our speaker, Ms. Holly Clausen. With over 20 years of experience, Ms. Holly Clausen has promoted concert events throughout the Southeast and become one of Atlanta's prominent concert promoters. She is currently the department head for ASO Presents at Verizon Wireless Amphitheater at Encore Park in Alpharetta, Delta, as well as Delta Classic Chastain Park Amphitheater and popular events at Atlanta's Symphony Hall. During her tenure in this position, she has had the opportunity to promote a number of well-known artists, including Maroon 5, Lincoln Park, the Zac Brown Band, Paul McCartney, Jackie Ivanko, and many, many more. Prior to joining the Atlanta, Atlanta Symphony Orchestra and ASO Presents in 2007, Holly, receives, Holly received um, or served as the Regional Director of Marketing for AEG Live, where she promoted over 90 live entertainment events in south, six southeastern states. She also served as the Director of Marketing in the Southeast for the House of Blues concert, for House of Blues Concerts, where she promoted concerts for the Lakewood Amphitheater, Phillips Arena, Gwinnett Center, Fox Theater, Tabernacle, and Amphitheaters in North Carolina and Virginia. So today we are honored to have someone with such great experience and wonderful stories to share with us here at the University of North Georgia. So please help me welcome our presenter, Holly Clausen. Good morning. Um, I just want to say first thank you for not having this at 8 a.m. because I'm a concert promoter. We do not do 8 a.m. So phone's over here. Um, I'm going to start off with a little introduction of my company in a video that I presented to um, all of our staff about two weeks ago. So it's a little outdated, but I think you still get the gist of it. Um, I work for a company called the Woodruff Art Center, and we have different divisions in it. We have the Alliance Theater who's kicking off this week with Steel Magnolias. So if you love theater, it is going to be spectacular. It's going to probably go out on its way to New York pretty soon. We have the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, which is me. And we also have young audiences, and not to mention the High Museum. So this presentation was given to all the divisions. Um, we have quarterly meetings, so this one was two weeks ago again. Um, I am in the rock and roll division, it used to be called the popular presentations division of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, but then some people thought, well the symphony's popular too, but not really popular, so we decided to rebrand re our, uh, our division, ASO Presents. It was also very confusing when you heard um, advertisements for Lincoln Park produced by the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. People thought the symphony was playing with Lincoln Park. So, and it has happened, not recently, but it has. Um, so, ASO Presents is our new name. So, we do all the concerts at Verizon Wireless Amphitheater, Delta Classic Chastain, and the non symphonic shows at Symphony Hall. And here's a little video. and these things slip the curl. This is Mr. Cat and Sugar Ray riding show. Why me I tell a man she have been intoxicated for her love. Hi, man, like a genie, for no call with a fly. So me I say a virgin to me, I beg her, give the first try. So the water come me at the way you walk. If you want a fun, energy-packed, and rockin' night, this show's for you. Keith Urban, Race Among Tour. Could you whisper in my 
wanna feel I'll give you anything To feel it coming Till you wake up on your own I wonder where you are And live with all your faults I wanna wake up where you Cut my bangs with some rusty kitchen scissors. I screamed his name till the neighbors called the cops. I numb the pain at the expense of my liver. Don't know what I did next. All I know I couldn't stop. Prepare for the one must see event. This is not just a concert. This is Paul McCartney. Back to the USSR. Paul McCartney, out there, one night only. Now the new show date at Phillips Arena, October 15th. Tickets for the originally scheduled show will be honored. Buy tickets at Ticketmaster.com. Paul McCartney, out there. When life leaves you high and dry, I'll be at your door tonight. If you need help, if you need help, I'll shut down the city lights. I'll lie, cheat, I'll beg and bribe to make you well, to make you well. When enemies are at your door, I'll carry you away from more. If you need help, if you need help. Your hope dangling by a string I'll share in your suffering To make you well To make you well Give me reasons to believe That you would do the same for me And I would do it for you That's my boy. It was funnier at the WAC meeting, but anyway. Um, so that's the last 10 months of my life and my department's life. So as you can see, we, we promote Jackie Ivanko, who I first started promoting her at 10, and now she's almost 14 years old. It's amazing what Photoshop can do, too, because she does not look that age. Um, to Motley Crue, to Country, you name it, we, we do everything. Um, I'm going to go through a little bit of what my company does, and then I'm going to go through the industry, because you really won't understand too much of what I do if you don't understand the industry. Um, and let me start off with the two most important questions that everyone always asks content promoters. No, we do not get to see the shows for free. We are working them. And two, Sometimes we get to meet the artist, sometimes we don't. The bigger the artist, the harder it is to have an interaction with them. And for a lot of the artists, you see them on YouTube or on the Grammys or wherever, and you have the high expectation here. And if they're having a bad day, it's going to go way down here. You're going to start cursing, you're going to go on Twitter and say, oh, my gosh, I hate this person. So a lot of times, we don't really want to interact with them. We'd rather have our own personal opinion still up here. There's also been a couple of times when I've had to do meet and greets and I did not introduce myself to the artist and I got yelled at. It's like, I really don't care to meet this person. But the tour manager's like, his ego, you need to meet this person. So sometimes that happens by mistake. So this is me apparently. These are our three amp or venues, I should say. Verizon, who has been to Verizon? Yes, 
Thank you. It is a owned and operated venue of the Woodruff Arts Center, my parent company. We opened it up um, in May of 2008 with the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra on the 8th. And then we went into four sold out shows of the Eagles. And then we kept on rocking and rolling after that. As you can see, we have different types of capacities, which I'll go into later. But it's a very versatile amphitheater. Delta Classic Chastain is a city-owned venue, which most people do not know. And ASO and Live Nation have a joint venture with the city. So Live Nation does half the shows, and the symphony does the other half of the shows. The way that the joint venture works is Live Nation can promote shows April through October. Any date they want, except for October, May, um, sorry, April, May, which had to do it on Friday, Saturday, because of school, because it's in the neighborhood. The symphony can only do shows June through October, and only on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. So it's just the way the contract's made. It's good for Live Nation, it's good for, it's good for ASO, and vice versa. So we get to pick our dates, and give those to the city, and then Live Nation can book around us. Very complicated. The thing's twice as big as this, so legal papers. And um, row and row is um, no tables. Everyone just sits down in the reserved seat. You can't bring any food or beverage in. Uh, table setup, which is very popular. Um, it's about the first half of the amphitheater, there are tables, and the other half is just regular seats, and then we have a very, I don't even know why we call it a lawn, to be honest with you. There's no place to sit on the lawn. It's like 300 capacity. It's the worst seats in the venue. So anybody been to Chastain? A little bit of a bite. If, you've, if you are going to go and you don't really have a lot of money, go for the end of the rear terrace, and sometimes you get some Zanuck. Our security there doesn't really look that much. <laughs> so. And Symphony Hall is uh, downstairs from my office. The capacity is around 1818 without a pit. Um, as you see, we have Philip Phillips coming up in a couple weeks. We have Susan Boyle um, coming this Sunday. We had a race a couple weeks ago. So we do a little bit of everything. So some more pictures of Verizon. Chastain. Really good food. Okay, the industry, and I do have my cheat sheets up here because I will forget. Okay, so there are two major promoters in the industry. Live Nation is the biggest promoter in the entire world. They own the vast majority of the amphitheaters in the country. Years and years ago when I started, there were hundreds of promoters in the world, and then a company called SFX started buying up all the little, co their competitions throughout the country. And then that expanded and expanded, and they bought um, Pace, which is where I started in 95 in Charlotte. They bought Cellar Door. They bought Bill Graham. They bought pretty much everyone. And then in 2000, I left Lakewood in 2005, the year after that, they bought House of Blues. And House of Blues and, and what was SFX, Clear Channel, who has really a lot of names. We'll just say Live Nation. They became the major content providers of the amphitheaters because they owned them. That's when they started buying tours and artists. And there's a two different things between art, buying artists and buying tours. Artists, Madonna, U2, Jay-Z, they do what's called a, a 360 deal, where they become the parents pretty much of that artist. They control the touring, they control the catalog, we have a new CD coming out or album. They are the people who will be distributing it. They do the, they do the merchandise. So they give about, so and so, I'm gonna give you about $170 million and you're gonna give me your career. Other things they also do is buy tours. So they don't wanna buy the Madonna or Jay-Z, they just wanna buy the entire year's worth of tours. So I go to Brad Paisley, go to Luke Bryan, and say, I'm gonna give you, a, pick a number, $35 million, and I'm gonna own your dates. 
You can play all my shows that my company has bought, and we play the exclusive promoter. So no one else can buy any of, the, any of these dates. Works for them sometimes, sometimes not. But if you're the artist, what's good, you get your paycheck. What's bad, you have no control over where you're going to play. And they also bought Ticketmaster, which had to go through the Department of Justice. That's a whole different story. So when you bitch about Ticketmaster, you're bitching about Live Nation. AEG is a company that came from previously. They have the second largest concert promoter in the world as well. Um, they primarily own arenas, whereas Live Nation owns outdoors. These guys are the indoor people. And they have Enrique Pitbull, I think tonight, I think I heard his father on the radio this morning, at Gwinnett. Um, they own Bon Jovi, that's for the Who on sale last weekend. Um, and then they also have the Susan Boyle tour. Other local uh, promoters, myself, Rival, they own Center Stage. They did the um, Outcast a couple weeks ago. Windstorm, the Variety Playhouse. They do a few shows of the Fox and Cobb Energy. So who owns what? And where's my drink? All right. Live Nation owns Lakewood, Tabernacle, and then they have the House of Chastain. So I'm not going to go through all of this, but you can see. The neutral venues, anyone can go into. I can go in there, AEG, Rival, you name it. They're neutral venues. For me to go into Lakewood, not going to happen. Tabernacle, sometimes, but rarely. Fox Theater, neutral, most expensive venue in town to do a show. So that gives you a little bit of information. So when you see different artists going here, you'll know if it's a neutral or who owns it. A little bit of a bio, I don't want to talk too much, on ASO Presents. We have a fantastic staff. Oh, I did take notes on this. I'm at bed last night. OK. ASO Presents, we model ourselves off of boutiques. You go to Macy's, it's got the same thing, got the same workers trying to push the same thing. Remember the little mom pop store? It's really trying to get your business, can only concentrate on you. That's what we are. We're not buying tours, trust me, the symphony is not buying tours, not buying Lincoln Park and going all over the place. When Lincoln Park comes to my venue, I'm concentrating on them. So we're a little bit more of a boutique. We want your business, we want you to come back, we want us to do very well. We're not you know, distracted by 30 other tours here and there. I mean, my, I'm good friends with my. Uh, competitor of a live nation. I don't know how she does it. I did it at AEG. I mean, she has like 100 shows. She works 11 o'clock almost every night. Not, well, we do too. <laughs> but I only have a couple shows to focus on. Kind of gone through this with you. You know, we're not a cookie cutter amphitheater. We have a, uh, 35 million was invested into Verizon Rose Amphitheater. And it was built for the symphony. So our acoustics are some of the best you'll hear anywhere. Why? Because the orchestra requires that. So that's why we put so much money in here. Um, so what, one thing that we have been very successful with is when Live Nation or AEG buys tours, we have relationships with some of those artists so we can get what's called a carve out. Rush is one of those. So Live Nation will buy the tour we will have Atlanta carved out just for us. Susan Boyle is an AEG tour, and we're actually very good friends with AEG. They called us and said, hey, we're going to play Atlanta. We want to play your venue where you guys promote it. Done. Chastain. Since you all, I'm going to go back here. Verizon, you cannot bring your food and beverage in. Your parking is included in your ticket. Those are called ancillary incomes. Majority of the ticket sales goes to the artist. Kind of like when you go to the movies. All that, when you go pay, Fury I think just came out, all that money is going back to the movie studio. You wonder why that popcorn is so expensive? They got to pay rent, they got to pay their employees, they got insurance, they got all, you know, taxes. That's why your popcorn is $10. For us, we got the same thing. 
we got to pay our rent, we've got our mortgages due, we've got to pay our employees. The majority of that money goes to the artist. That's why our beer is $8 or double wines, $15 or whatever, because we need that in order to have, keep our business going. Chastain, difficult, very difficult. You could bring your own stuff in. So that wipes out a whole line of distribution of income for us. So it's a lot more challenging to make money at Chastain. Verizon, you have $4 in your ticket price. We keep that because we're paying our parking people. City owned venue. City gets that parking money. Or you can park on the side of the street. So for here, it's a lot different model to make money at Chastain than it is at Verizon. And then Symphony Hall, again, you can't bring your stuff in, but we do have a little bit more leeway on that one. So what does all the department heads do for the concert industry? Bookers. My booker is called Clay. And it is his responsibility to put product, to put artist, into each of, our, each of our venues. He has relationships with CAA, William Morris, APA. He's traveling all over the country to make sure he has that one relationship, to make sure when an artist decides to go on tour, he gets the phone call. General manager. He's pretty much the boss of everybody else. He is responsible for the maintenance, making sure everything gets done, that um, concessions with ovations is, you know, having the best product out there. I'm selling tickets. Ticketing is also selling tickets. Um, marketing, we'll get into that, but that's me. Ticketing, got to be able to buy your ticket. So we'll go through that a little bit more in a couple minutes, but. They're responsible for distributing all the tickets. Finance, they pay the bills, they wire the artist transfers. A lot of times the finance department will also go into um, contracts, sponsorship, Verizon Wireless, Camp Theater, Delta Classic Chastain. We sell Budweiser. We have uh, Delta sponsorship over the Verizon. That helps us with a bottom line, but also goes exposure. Verizon on the Sanford Theater, since we took over, I believe the Verizon, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Distribution of cell phone service um, has increased because every single time I place an ad or a promo on the radio station, you hear Verizon Wireless. Operations, the, uh, the front of the stage is called the bowl. So operations is responsible for everything in front of the stage. Parking, the concessions, make sure all that's all running correctly. Um, they're responsible for the maintenance, for the paint, light bulb changing, you name it, that's front of house. Production is back of house. So at the front of the stage, back, that is all our production manager. He advances the tour. Normally before we go on sale, we find out there's a thrust or anything, we're gonna be killing tickets. I'm sorry, we're killing seats. We'll tell the ticketing department so they won't sell those. Um, Stagehands, catering, pretty much everything backstage. Guarantees. How do you come up with a guarantee? How is Miranda Lambert 50,000? Or how is she 150,000? How is she 400,000? A lot of times, the guarantee will depend on the size of the venue. A Symphony Hall guarantee will be a lot less than a Verizon. If it's not, then you'll be paying $2,000 a seat at, at uh, Symphony Hall. Or vice versa, if the seats at Symphony Hall are $10, Verizon will be 50 cents if you worked on the same guarantee. So at <coughs> Verizon, for those of you who have been there, we do what's called reserve seat only. We do not sell the lawn or open it up. And unfortunately, we get a lot of complaints about this because people love to dance and play around the lawn. For some of these shows, if we open up the lawn, that guarantee is gonna go up because it's 55,000 additional tickets, potentially, the artist is gonna sell. So if a guarantee is $150,000, open the lawn, it's another $50,000. So a lot of times we get complaints, but 
We just want to keep your ticket price down. That's also because we don't think that the artist is going to sell 12,000 tickets. We want a totally sold out show at 7,000. Last year, a fallout boy, we sold that show out, couldn't get a ticket. We begged the artist, let's open the lot. We have another month out. They don't want to do it. They wanted the stock sold out show. The market, a guarantee in Atlanta is going to be a lot more than a guarantee in Charleston, South Carolina, if they even get the artist. So if you're in a primary market, Atlanta, New York, Houston, Dallas, LA, you're going to be normally paying top dollar because these are primary markets of the country. Secondary markets, Charlotte, Raleigh, Nashville, they could be a, lot, a little cheaper. Tertiary markets, Charleston, Savannah, Macon, there's not a lot of population to um, sell a lot of tickets to, so your guarantee is going to be a little smaller for the, for the promoter to break even in a weekday. Sometimes it makes a difference, sometimes it doesn't. Obviously, every concert promoter wants to have a show on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mondays suck. Y'all don't want to come out to a show. I don't want to go to work on a Monday, work till 2 o'clock in the morning. But sometimes when that happens, the guarantee will come down because it lets us them to go out to, to watch a show. Where's our display? First of all, it's routing. They're doing a full tour, they're doing half the country, just doing the south, doing the north. Is Canada going to be in there? The artist decides, or the tour, bu tour buyer, we're going to do 30 dates. Okay, in that 30 dates, it's going to hit your city. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Or is that the first leg of the tour? There could always be different legs coming in. I love that, legs. So they are, you know, the, tour, the tour is going really well on the first leg. Let's do a second leg. Let's get back out there, do it again. Third leg sometimes happens. So maybe in the first part of the leg, your city's not on the routing. Indoor outdoor. This used to play a lot more about 10, 15 years ago. When production, when you see the artists getting ready to go out on tour, they would figure out, we're going to do indoor and outdoor because your production, your sound, your lights, your pyro will be custom made on the tour for an indoor or an outdoor. Sometimes, now, uh, in the past 10 years or so, you can pretty much do indoor or outdoor on some shows. Um, Motley Crue is one of those. They're doing a lot of amphitheaters and they're doing a lot of arenas. But generally, especially during the summer, it's either indoor or outdoor. Size of the venue, kind of already discussed that. Offers, show me the money. There was, we had an uh, artist last year, pretty much confirmed. $100,000, bam, bring it, confirm. Our competition, Live Nation, offered them $250,000. Show me the money. Sometimes, since we are not the uh, tour promoter, like a Live Nation, I don't really want to swear too much in here, like I normally do, I call it the butt tax. So if you're going to take the show rate for me from Lakewood, we're going to give you, you're going to charge another $200,000. That happens. And then you wonder why our ticket prices have to increase to pay for that extra $200,000. Avails. This can be a good and a bad thing. If Lakewood already has a show, come to Mama. It's already on sale. Come to the Fries, come to the Al Alpharetta, we'll take it. So it depends if the building is available. If, the, if they can actually go in and load in. Kind of talked about the Live Nation AG tour. Like Enrique and Pitbull, they're playing all the arenas for all the uh, AG markets. Live Nation, they have a, a guy out of Nashville called Brian. Great guy. It is his job to know who the next big country artist is. What he does is he forms personal relationships with Brad, Toby, Tim, Rascal. So he books all of them together for all of the Live Nation sheds in the country. And that package goes all around the sheds because they own that. Brian said, and he said, okay, here I go. Show me the money. Um, yeah. So sometimes we can bid on them, sometimes we can't, but they're generally Live Nation tours, so they're going to have to go to Lakewood. And the relationship. 
relationships with the booker, the management, have together used to be more important. Now it's more of the show me the money. But the reason why my company did Paul McCartney last weekend, last week, last Wednesday, because my booker has a fantastic relationship with the manager of Paul McCartney, who also does Tina Turner, he does Pink. So when he, Paul decided to come to Atlanta, we got the phone call. That's the first time um, in the history of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra that they've ever promoted a show at uh, Phillips Arena. Okay, so how the process works. Booker and agent begin the discussion. You're going through the avails. Do we want to make an offer for, the, for this artist? Booker makes an offer. Do the scaling. Is it going to be over reserve seat only? Is it going to include a lawn? Are we going to do a J.A. Pitt? What type of guarantee does the artist want in order for us to do the scaling? The ticket price is for us to break even. Deal confirms. And unfortunately, sometimes we find out by, via the internet when our show's confirmed, which is kind of funny. If, oh, if y'all want to know who's coming to town, sign up for pollstar.com. You can put your email address in there. You sign up for what buildings we'll be having um, the shows. I, I follow Phillips, Verizon, Chastain, Fox. So when an artist announces a tour, Pollstar is literally the first one to send you an email. And unfortunately, somehow people never know the concerts are coming. I do because I have Polestar. So Polestar.com. Um, so sometimes I find out that my shows are confirmed via Polestar, not the booker, not the agent. And on sale is determined. It's either a national on sale, like the Who last weekend, AG put on, on sale in the entire country, or it's an individual on sale, solo on sale. So that also determines when we go on sale. Philip Phillips had a national on sale two months ago. Um, well, we finally got to the show, so we were not included in the national on sale. Sometimes you're not. If you have a uh, competing artist that weekend with the same genre of music, it would be suicide to go on sale. Sometimes that can be uh, moved a little bit, but not always. And then my department prepares the on sale. So we analyze each concert. Hold on. I do have some really good news. Here we go. Okay, so who is the ticket buyer for each show? Kenny Chesney? It's going to be a lot different than STS9. It's be a lot different than Paul McCartney. So we need to figure out who is going to buy the ticket. Who wants to go to this show? So we look at demographics. Age, sex, income. Who wants to buy a ticket for this show? Where do they live? Country artists? The people buying tickets? Generally, OTP. Country does not do well, ITP, unless you're Garth Brooks or George Strait, big, big names. Outside the perimeter, they just don't want to come out, down to Midtown. I don't blame them, because that's a lot of traffic from going in Cobb County. So we take all these demographic information, and we're like, okay, now how do these, how do these people consume music? How do they consume their information? It's all different. So classic rock, they listen to the river, they listen to Rock 100. My, my, my recent pet print a little bit. So it's more like a Sticks, like a Motley Crue, um, James Taylor. Your classic crooners, on Sunday, they're reading the AJC or their cup of coffee. So my will be in the AJC on Sunday. They're also really into NPR. Heavy TV shows, the news, GMA, Today Show, the 6 o'clock news, 11 o'clock news. They need a, that's how they get their information, so we don't have a spot in there if affordable. Jeopardy, huge numbers. I'm not that smart, so I don't really watch it. I watch Entertainment Tonight, but anyway. CBS Sunday Morning, great show for the crooners. Fish, STS9, nah. They're not watching today's show. They don't even know what the hell a today's show is. So you're doing a lot more online banners, street flyers, festivals. And then you start developing your promotions. Excuse me. <coughs> so we contact the program directors and the promotions people over at each radio station we want to get involved with. <coughs> we say, hey, Philip Phillips coming to Symphony Hall. The on sale date is blah, 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 blah. I don't remember. And we're going to probably have 20 to 30 tickets available. So they get with their team to look at their availability to find out when they could give away tickets. 
morning drive, afternoon drive, winning weekend. Uh, we just got a winning weekend actually on B98 for Philip Phillips. Halloween weekend, next weekend. So we work with them together to see how many tickets they want and how much promotional support I can get. During the summer, I've been told I own radio because I've had three or four winning weekends depending on the format, but that's my job. And during, during, the, during the winter, I really don't have that many shows, but during the summer, I have to have all the promotional support. Then you go and talk to your account reps, people that take your money, people give you wine for Christmas. Say, okay, I need 15, 30, or 60 second rates. What's the difference between, what kind of impact can this have between 15 and 30 second rates? If you are Lord, if you're Zach Brown, I just need to know where he's playing and where, when your tickets go on sale. Sticks, Eagles, Paul McCartney, you, thought, you forget how many hits these people have. So you have to have a longer spot. If I placed a spot for James Taylor for 15 seconds, <sighs> James, I like him. I don't know, do you really want to go? Okay. 30 seconds. I forgot I forgot he sang a nice song. I oh my, and there's another hit, and there's another hit. I have to buy tickets. 60 second spots generally are going out of style because they're so expensive, and people's attention spans are a lot smaller than they used to be. So, unless you have to have a lot of information, like if there's an Amex pre-sale or something, you generally don't buy 60s anymore. FYI, on cable you can only buy 30 seconds, and on network you can buy 10, 15, 30s. And then you put it all together and you see what it looks like. So this is a radio proposal. Station sent this to us for a concert over the summer. Tells me the dates that they're gonna be promoting it and how many tickets they need. This is another concert proposal from a top 40 station, which I think I actually put in here. Um, so this tells me they want a pair of front row tickets. This is the winning weekend we're gonna have here. Afternoon drive, middays. And we take all this information, plus an ad grid, and we send it to the management, marketing does. And we call William Morris, Michelle over there, or Allie or Shannon over at CAA, or the, even sometimes management, and we go through this line by line. Because the way the deals are structured, a lot of this could be, is gonna impact their ticket sales. They wanna make sure each of the market people locally know what they're doing. And it'd be surprising how many people do not. So they just do a couple spots here and there, and they're, okay, I don't know why tickets aren't selling. You have to look at date parts. You have to know which date part to buy. For instance, B98, I would never buy morning drive. They are more and more powerful on middays. Why? Go into a store, go into a retail outlet. They all have nice, calming music. B98 is a station in town. They have much higher ratings during middays. ABE, NPR, they don't have uh, commercials. They cannot have call to action because they're a nonprofit. So when you do ads on NPR, they really stand out. CNN Sports, I think that was for the Braves. I think Braves are in training camp. Probably wouldn't do that now. Um, CBS, ABC, so we take all this, proposal proposals, and we get everything approved. So let's say we got 100 tickets approved, Send an email to the radio station, your proof for this, and then you put the show on sale. Additional market responsibilities, research potential touring artist. Determine if there's an offer that's even feasible. We had an artist yesterday, I don't remember who it was. We were like, God no, please don't book this show, please don't book this show. But sometimes you book a show because of a relationship. Years and years ago when I was at Virginia Beach, there was this really new hot country artist. She was rumored to go on tour. But in order to even make a submission to get her tour, you had to buy this other little artist over here. The entire country bought this little artist over here. So maybe 2,000 tickets. Big artist over here, she didn't go on tour. So sometimes you buy an artist just for the relationship because the management just has to put this, the, the artist is sitting at home like, I really want to go on tour, I miss my fans, and then my wife's driving me nuts, I got the mortgage to pay on the second condo. Agent, I'm going on tour. 
all right, I gotta call some favors. So sometimes that's what happens. Um, what ticket prices sh should be, you look at, um, there's a uh, couple different programs that we use to figure out what the history is of um, the tour. If we don't have it, if, if let's say they play Phillips or the Fox or the nationwide tour, you wanna see how they're doing. There's a couple of different resources we can see what, what the ticket prices were on the net. Um, and see if media support is available. There's a uh, reality show going to go back on tour next year. And so we had to um, ask like B98 and Star, what do you guys think of it? And their input helps us tell our booker if we're going to buy that show or not. Work with various sponsors, Budweiser, Verizon, Delta. We'll get into that in a couple seconds. Um, work with various retailers, Spa Sidel. A lot of the mommy bloggers are fantastic. They just die for tickets. And they'll send email blasts to their 20, 30,000 people promoting your show. Uh, set up interviews with local press, AJC, radio stations, sometimes TV if they get in town early enough. Um, sometimes um, the tour does not have what's called an ad mat, which is your print ad. Oh, also, uh, when someone goes on tour, generally, there's two production houses that have all your media, your radio spot, your TV spot, and your ad mat. So if you're in Chicago, or you're in Atlanta, you're in LA, you're here, you will hear the identical spot. The only changes, the date, and the ticket information in the venue. So sometimes uh, they don't have copies. It's a small artist or someone that's doing a one-off, they won't be on tour. So it's up to us to come up with the radio spot, the TV ads, the print ads. Social media obviously is very important. Email blasts are huge for us. People love opening up our email blasts for some strange reasons, which I love. We also, they have show, we have coordinate all the show promotions, press, photographers, you'll see us escorting them down to the pit or the soundboard, radio station remotes, sponsor promotions. Again, work with finance. It's the worst part of my job, I swear to God. I don't do numbers. I'm the marketing, not, not accounting. Um, sponsor recaps and venue surveys. A little bit of radio research for you. This is a, a radio station in town. This is their entire playlist, which I cut off, for the entire year of 2014. Sponsor promotion, we did at Verizon with Georgia Natural Gas in this show. Another one we did a couple years ago with Racetrack, Budweiser, and Incubus. Spots Adele last year. Girls Night Out, Be Fabulous. AJC promotion we did for our, uh, this, this, these two artists, Chris Bodie and Will Downing, were not on tour together. So this is where the writing your copy comes in. I came up with this entire thing. I um, sent the management for approval. Press release. Uh, Susan Boyle's here on Sunday. We were able to secure an interview in the AJC. This came out on Monday, and she'll hit be in print on Friday. Ticketing and, and uh, marketing work hand in hand. So whatever tickets I need help for promotions, I have to let my box office know that or else she will release them and I will not have any tickets for promotions. This is called a ticket header. There's only six lines on your tickets. Uh, Pre-sales can originate from the venue. I can do a pre-sale if I want. Radio station can do one. Like Star 94s, I think they're started this morning for their jingle jam ball-ish. Fan clubs, Amex. I know so much about you, it's not even funny. That scares me, actually. So for this particular show, and I can actually tell you what car you drive, I can tell you where your mortgage company is, very scary. So this is who bought tickets for this particular show, and I honestly don't remember who it is. So 573 fans, almost all married, have children. This is how they are buying their tickets, their ages, income. So when we look at this with previous shows, that helps us with our marketing. Okay. Where am I going to hit these two people? Hmm, you got a lot of money too. So that helps us determine where our marketing is done. Traffic, this is how many hits were at Ticketmaster to buy tickets for this particular show. So this is the on sale. You normally have a huge jump. And then you trickle, 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 trickle. Oh, they had a little promotion here. Trickle, trickle, oh, maybe vacation, something there. And then closer to the on sale. I'm sorry, the week of the show. Your conversion rate, that's how many people go to buy tickets and convert those into sales. Generally, it's between 2% and 7%. This is obviously a little lower. 
That's where your ticket buyers are. I think this was, no, it wasn't Motley Crue. So, uh, I don't know who this was. So Verizon is right there. Chastain's right here, and Symphony Hall's right here. Scaling. So this is where your ticket breaks are. So you're gonna buy a $65 ticket, P1, price one, right there. This one, obviously, the lawn is not available. And this is my last slide. Um, this helps us rescale. So right before this show, we had our box office. This is where our elementary school pays off. You're still coloring. We say, where are the tickets uh, sold and where are the gaps gonna be for the artist? Who, when that artist is on stage, is he gonna see a whole gap over here? So we have our box office do this. These are all band and tour sponsor holds. My broker got on the phone and said, um, it's gonna look like crap for your artists. You need to release those tickets so we can sell them. Right here is where the break was on ticket price. Actually, it was over here. And so we rescaled this to a lower ticket price for demand. Same up here. So um, I spoke a lot, so I almost had time. So please ask questions. This is the only time you're gonna be able to ask me one-on-one. -on -one. Anything you want to know, whether it's the concert industry, how to get into the business, um, internships, I'm here. I have a couple of questions for you. Okay. How do you get into it and what is available? <laughs> and, and also, who is the promoter of um, Music Midtown? Music Midtown, that's an easy one, that's Live Nation. Yeah. Used to be SFX and a bunch of other ones, but that is Live Nation. Um, how to get into the industry and internships. It is absolutely amazing how many people do not pursue internships or even informational interviews. You know how many informational interviews I've gotten requests for? Zero. My office is open. So those people who are trying to graduate, try to figure out what they want to do, call, call someone up, say, hey, I don't want to take more than 15 minutes of your time, but I need an informational interview. Most people will actually do it. Internships. We have to seek people out. It is so hard to find interns. Not quite sure why. Don't you want to work for the content industry and put in a long hours of work? But we're actually looking for interns for the spring. So we contact different universities and say, hey, do you guys have a program? Because no one's contacting us. It is absolutely amazing how no one takes that first initiative. When I was at the AEG, this woman, Lenore, came into our office. She goes, I just want to work. Don't pay me, I don't care, I just need some experience. So, gave her a little office, had an extra computer, didn't pay her anything. Year later, she's in the marketing department. Four years later, she's a booker. She took that initiative. She wanted to get into the industry. So you guys have to take some initiative, brainstorm, how can I get into it? Informational interview. So, I will tell you the content industry, it is very hard to get into, there's not a lot of us. I mean, I go back to the um, department heads. Those are the only full-time people there. But if you can get into it with a radio station, um, I actually had a person from LSU come up to me uh, during the summer. And I told her, because she wanted to get in the content industry, what do I do? So when I was in college years ago, I worked for the radio station. She goes, really? I said, yeah. I was like, what's the... What's the uh, um, print publication for you guys. And she told me for LSU, I was like, you need to get your foot in the door. Do ex extracurricular events. Like I was actually a, a stage production person my senior year at West Virginia. All that information helped on my resume. So when I got the interview in Charlotte, I worked for, the, for U92, the radio station. Got me the job. I didn't do anything at the radio station, but it looked really good on the, radio, on the resume. So. You know, go call, I mean, um, Ryan Seacrest was an intern at Star 94. Look at him now. So you can get an internship or volunteer to help in a related industry, and then you can project yourself into different ones after that. But don't be afraid to ask. Another question? What's your favorite part of the My favorite, I think about that. Um, the worst part is you want to have concerts Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So during the summer, I work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
I don't go to the beach with my friends. I don't go on vacations. I miss wedding. But that's so you got to make the commitment to be a concert promoter. You know, working on a Monday show, whatever, you're going to be at the office anyway. But coming in, like this Sunday, I have to freaking go back to the venue because I have Susan Boyle. So I'd much rather be watching CBS or something or another on my DVR or drinking a beer on a patio. But um, that's the cons. You, you have to work a lot of hours. Pros. I dress like this every day. Actually, this is dressed up. Uh, you make your own hours a lot of times because you're on LA time and New York time. So I go to the office about 9, 30, 10, go to the gym in the morning, and I probably won't leave till 6 or 7. But I also miss rush hour traffic, which is, a, that's what I like. That's my favorite. I miss rush hour traffic. <laughs> Anything else? What process did you follow to create the new brand? Well, um, we had a grant actually from a company. So they hired someone out of New York and they did all these case studies and we were thrown ASO Presents, literally. They did this whole study research, they got their money's worth and they, we were told it was ASO Presents. But I will say with branding, we take great pride with our customer service. You wouldn't think customer service would be, in, be um, in conjunction with a brand, a logo. But when you come to Verizon, you're going to be treated very well. You will get the, you will we'll have people help you to your seats. We have really good food. If you don't act like an idiot and get completely wasted, we won't have to throw you out, which does happen sometimes. But again, we have really good customer service, so that impacts our brand. If you are a die-hard concert um, person and Luke Bryan's going on tour, and you love him, you're gonna go whatever venue it is. Don't matter, I'm going to the show. But if you're on the cusp, I could go, I could take him. The venue, brand, and the venue amenities play an important part on the people who are not diehards. Because the diehards people are normally buying the first couple weeks. It's the week of the show, like, well, honey, when do you want, I don't know, do you wanna get a babysitter? Do you wanna spend the money to go out? If they love the venue, they will take that income and give it to you. So customer service is very important for branding. Correct. The uh, symphony actually books themselves. The symphony is uh, their model is much different. They could tell you two years from now who's playing. I just booked a show for New Year's Eve. I haven't put it on sale yet. I'm announcing it next week. So their cycle is much broader than mine because my artists decide, oh, I got that damn payment, mortgage payment, or I want to go on tour. So that lead time is a lot smaller. For orchestras, it's a lot longer. So they do their brochure. They can tell you who's coming next spring and next June. I don't have a freaking clue. My people haven't, haven't even gotten up yet. So. Breaking even is always a good thing. Trust me, then my booker's in a really good mood. Sometimes we will book shows that we know we're going to lose money on in order to have that prestige artist come to our venue or to get in really good with that agency. You know, he's got this little artist coming, so we'll book him, we know we're gonna lose some money in order to be in the running for the bigger artist. So breaking even is always a good thing. Um, making money is a fantastic thing. But sometimes you know, I mean, if you cannot make money on every single show. If that were the case, I'd know everything and I would have an island right now and y'all be like, you know, coming to talk to me. But if you can break even, especially Chastain, that's a fantastic thing, that's hard to do. Um, but again, losing a little bit of money, but having that prestige name come to your stage, it's worth it. Xanax. It is a very, very stressful um, environment. You have to have a huge backbone. A lot of people, um, you form the backbone. When I started in this industry, I was really nice, and, I, and then you get yelled at a lot. And strong, slowly, your backbone starts. So when your dad yells at you for something, you're like, dude, you're no Howard. Whatever, I don't care. 
So, I mean, you have to be able to take criticism. You have to be able to take that criticism and learn from it. Also, I mean, a lot of these people, they haven't toured in 15 years. They don't understand why they're not selling any tickets. You can't tell me your has been. You know, you should be lucky to sell 1,000 tickets. You're never going to sell 4,000. So when someone comes back to you and says, what's your marketing doing? Why can't you sell tickets? This is my heart. Blah, blah, blah. And you go, it's like, whoa, just take it all in. So a backbone. Got to give you a dog. Got, and some people don't have a backbone. It's hard, I'll be honest with you. At your age, to where you are, I start right here. Emory, because um, I, I talk down there sometimes, they have a whole department on concerts. And they have kids in there, they book them, they produce them, they do all the advertising, they do everything themselves. And that, I can't tell you how good that looks on a resume. But you're not at, at um, you're probably not gonna lose a lot of money on that. I'm not quite sure where their money comes from to buy the artist. Um, but you can start with Variety Playhouse. Um, you know, they might help co-promote it. But you got to get with the artist and know what expectations are and how to sell it. You know, Yacht Rock, for goodness sake, is a freaking cover band. And they're selling tens of thousands of tickets every year. Who would have thought? But they grew themselves. They went to the Variety. They played Chastain for us last year. They were actually just on our stage um, a couple weeks ago. So, and commitment, a lot of commitment.